If you've ever traveled out of your own country, you probably have some first-hand experience with exchange rates. For example, if you're an American and you travel to Canada or to Mexico, as soon as you arrive in the foreign country, you must acquire some local currency. If you go to the ATM and stick your American ATM card in there, you're going to end up getting some cash out that isn't equal to the amount of dollars that you had to give up in order to get that cash. Well, what you are experiencing when you take money out of your bank account in another country is the exchange rate. An exchange rate is simply the value of one country's currency expressed in terms of another country's currency. You may have always wondered how exchange rates are determined. Well, just like the price of most things, exchange rates are determined in the marketplace. The market in which exchange rates are determined is known as the foreign exchange market. This is where currencies are bought and sold and exchange rates are determined. Over here on the right, I've got two examples of foreign exchange markets in which the demand and the supply of a currency determines the value of that currency in another country. On the top, we have the market for US dollars in Europe. Notice that the price axis of this graph is not labeled P, rather it is labeled euros per dollar. The exchange rate of dollars in Europe is expressed in terms of euros. And on this graph, we can see that the value of one dollar in Europe is 0 0.9 euros or 90 euro cents. The blue line in this graph represents the demand for US dollars. The green line represents the supply of US dollars in Europe. In the graph on the bottom, we have the market for euros in the United States. The value of euros in the US is expressed in terms of dollars. So our vertical axis, instead of being labeled P, is labeled dollars per euro. And we can see that the exchange rate in the United States for euros is 1.1 dollars per euro. The green line represents Americans' demand for euros and the blue line represents the supply of euros in the United States Forex market for euros. Two things can happen to the value of a currency in the Forex market, depending on how demand or supply change. If the demand for a currency rises or the supply of a currency decreases and all else is held constant, then we'll see an appreciation of that currency. This is an increase in a currency's value on the Forex market. On the other hand, if demand for a country's currency falls or the supply increases and all else is held equal, a currency's value will decrease on the Forex market. This is known as a depreciation. Of course, appreciation and depreciation refer to a change in the value of a currency against another currency. So once again, I'll remind you that a currency's price or value is always expressed in terms of another country's currency. Before we illustrate appreciation and depreciation of these currencies in our graph, Let's first talk about who demands and who supplies a currency on the Forex market. Let's start with demand, and we'll look at the market for dollars in Europe. Who in Europe would demand US dollars? Let's start with the most obvious example. Any European who wishes to buy an American product must acquire US dollars in order to buy those products. So consumers in Europe who wish to buy imports must acquire foreign currency in order to do so. Now it may sound a little silly because if you go into a store in Europe and buy something made in the United States, you don't need to carry dollars with you. But that transaction ultimately requires an exchange of euros for dollars. Therefore, the more European consumers wish to buy American products, the greater the demand for dollars will be. However, European consumers are not the only demanders of US dollars. And likewise, American consumers are not the only demanders of euros. In addition to the purchase of goods and services, investors who wish to invest in foreign assets also demand foreign currencies. A European who wishes to buy a house in the United States or invest in US government bonds or put their money into a US bank account ultimately has to exchange his euros for dollars. The third major demander of foreign currency is governments and central banks. Central banks may demand foreign currency in order to acquire foreign assets of their own. The European Central Bank holds billions of dollars of U.S. government bonds for which it requires U.S. dollars. Therefore, the demand for U.S. dollars is partially determined by the European Central Bank's demand for foreign assets, including U.S. government bonds and other assets. So the primary demanders of a foreign currency in the Forex market are consumers who wish to buy imports, investors who wish to invest in foreign assets, and governments and central banks which wish to hold foreign assets as well. 
So who supplies currency in a forex market? Let's have a look at the European market for dollars and look at the green line to explain who supplies dollars in the European forex market for dollars. It's quite simple. It's the opposite of the demanders for dollars. Rather than European consumers who wish to buy American goods, foreign consumers who are buying domestic goods are supplying their currency in order to acquire the domestic currency to buy the goods that they are importing from your country. So one way dollars end up in Europe is because Americans are buying European goods. As they buy European goods, they demand euros and supply dollars. Therefore, there is a supply of dollars in the European market for dollars, thanks to American consumers buying European goods. Secondly, we've got foreign investors who invest in domestic assets. In the same way that European investors buy American government bonds and put their money in American banks, American investors are buying European government bonds and putting their money in European banks. In order to do so, they must acquire euros and supply dollars. So the supply of dollars in Europe is partially made up by foreign investors who are supplying their currency in the local forex market in order to invest in domestic assets. Thirdly, foreign governments and central banks invest in domestic assets and therefore supply their own currencies into the domestic forex market and demand the domestic currency. So looking back at the market for dollars in Europe, the United States government, the United States Central Bank, holds on to European assets for which it supplies US dollars. The demand and supply of a currency in the forex market is made up almost entirely by consumers, investors, and governments and central banks who are investing in foreign assets or buying foreign goods and services. The transactions that take place between these stakeholders across national borders result in a flow of foreign exchange into and out of the forex markets at all times. Let's look over at our graph now and show some scenarios that can lead to an appreciation or a depreciation of these two currencies. First, I'd like to point out the colors of my demand and supply curves. Notice that the demand for dollars in Europe is expressed by a blue line. Likewise, the supply of euros in America is represented by a blue line as well. There's a reason for this. Let's talk about a scenario here. Let's say that European consumers' demand for American imports increases. This causes an increase in the demand for US dollars in Europe. But in order to acquire more US goods and the dollars needed to buy those goods, Europeans must increase their supply of euros in the US market. So the reason I have colored both these lines blue is that if a factor causes a shift outwards in the blue line in our graph on the top, it will likewise cause a shift outwards in the blue line in the graph on the bottom. So how would an increase in Europeans' demand for American imports affect the exchange rate of the euro and the dollar? Let's have a look at the market of dollars first. Because Europeans are now demanding more American goods, dollars become scarcer in Europe. The demand for dollars rises and the dollar appreciates. In other words, it goes up in value against the euro. Greater demand for dollars causes an appreciation of the US dollar in Europe. What about the euro in the United States? The inflow of euros into the US forex market is going to cause the euro to depreciate to ER1. The value of the euro falls as the supply of euros increases due to Europeans buying more American goods. This decrease in the price of euros expressed in terms of dollars is called a depreciation. There are other scenarios that can cause an appreciation or a depreciation of a currency. For example, what if American investors wanted to buy more European assets? In this case, we look at the market for euros in the United States and we could show the demand for euros rising. As the demand for euros rises because American investors wish to hold more European assets, the supply of US dollars is going to rise in Europe. In order to acquire European assets, Americans must supply their own currency in the European forex market, causing a depreciation of the dollar. In fact, in this case, it goes right back to where it started and an appreciation of the euro. Changes in the demand and the supply of currencies in the forex market are going to affect those currencies exchange rates against other countries' currencies. In the scenarios we've described here, we showed how an increase in the demand for dollars could cause the dollar to appreciate as Europeans demand more American imports. The same increase in demand for American imports caused the supply of euros to rise and a depreciation of the euro. In the second scenario, we described American investors who wish to invest in European assets, say government bonds or savings accounts. 
This caused an increase in the demand for euros, that's the green line in the graph on the bottom, and an increase in the supply of dollars. In this way, the dollar first appreciated and then depreciated. That leads to the final part of this lesson where we distinguish between different exchange rate systems. The scenario described in this lesson was an example of a floating exchange rate system. If a government adopts a floating exchange rate, this means that the value of a currency is determined freely in the Forex market by changes in demand and supply. In other words, there's no government intervention. The government makes no effort to appreciate or depreciate its own currency in the Forex market. A floating exchange rate system will be explained more clearly in our next lesson. Other exchange rate systems include managed and fixed exchange rates. A managed system is one where the value of a currency is closely managed by government and central bank policy. A managed exchange rate system requires the central bank and the government to set a range of exchange rates within which the currency may fluctuate. If there were downward pressure on a currency's exchange rate below that desired range of exchange rates, the government or the central bank could intervene to revalue or to appreciate the currency. On the other hand, if the currency were to get too strong and appreciate above the range of acceptable exchange rates, government could intervene and devalue or depreciate that currency. The third system a country might adopt in order to determine its exchange rate on the foreign exchange market is what we call a fixed or a pegged exchange rate system. In such a system, a government actually pegs the value of its currency against another, usually one of its major trading partners. In most cases, this means pegging their currency against the United States dollar, which is the world's most widely traded currency on forex markets. So in a peg system, the value of a currency is fixed against another currency, usually the US dollar. Looking back at this lesson, we've defined what an exchange rate is. We've looked at two forex markets and shown how a country's exchange rate can change in value due to a change in the demand or the supply of that currency resulted in either an appreciation or a depreciation. We've explained who demands and who supplies currencies on the forex market and we've learned that in fact consumers, investors, governments and central banks are the primary stakeholders who demand and supply currencies to the foreign exchange market. So why do exchange rates matter? Of course nations trade with one another and many nations have different currencies. Therefore every exchange between countries requires an exchange of currencies. If it weren't for exchange rates, there would be no way of knowing the value of one country's output expressed in terms of another country's currency. And since many of us love to buy imports from other countries or travel to other countries, we need to have a way of knowing how much our home currency is worth when we travel abroad or when we buy goods from other countries. Here we go. One step at a time.